so the Difficult. first thing that I want to do is to um, restore everything back to its factory presets. This isn't something that you need to do necessarily yourself, but it's something that I'm going to do to show you um, how this would work. So basically I'm going to start off uh, turning the machine off. And then as I turn it on, I'm going to hold this preset button right here. So presets down, turning on. And then we see this uh, GCFG, global configuration there. And I'm going to turn the dial until I see reset. And I press reset. And press again. And then it's back to normal. So this no longer has the presets that I'd put in. These are the, these are the factory presets from uh, on down the line. A2, A3, A4, and so forth and so on. We're going to start from the beginning here. We have our Nectar Pacer turned off, and we go to nectartech.com slash support to find their support network. Then we want to go over here to Pacer Support. Click there. We get taken to Pacer DAW Setup, Factory Presets, and Firmware, and so forth and so on. And this is what we want. We want to find, uh, for now, just the updating firmware for Pacer. We click there. And then you have to decide if you're working with a Windows-based computer or with a OS X-based computer. I'm doing OS X, and so I'm going to click here to install this firmware. It downloads. And in the meantime, let's see what we have to do here. So it says connect your pacer to your computer. That's done fine. And switch to off. So we have it off. And then I'm going to hold down stomp switch number one here, <laughs> uh, which is labeled solo while turning its power to on. So holding down solo and turning the computer on. Okay, and then we get this forward up, uh, up with the three dots along the bottom, which is our next step. So I'm going to switch over to my download. And I see it there. I'm going to open it. And uh, first I want to open this user's guide because that has some useful information there. I can make this a little bit bigger for you. Um, so this part we've done already. We've connected the pacer to the USB. We switched off the we switched off the pacer holding switch one, um, so that we have this FWUPD that is showing, and it's ready to receive the firmware. So now we're going to go and locate the downloaded package that it came with, and find the top level uh, of firmware in the folder, and launch the NK update application. Okay, so that's what we're doing next. I launch this and it says, are you sure? Yes, I am. And then we go on through. It says, okay, Nectar unit is connected in firmware update mode. Select load file to open our firmware file to be programmed. And then I want to select program. Okay, and it says that everything is now successful. I can restart my Nectar. So I'm turning the Nectar off and then restart the, and turn off the software as well. So I'm closing this out. Okay, so obviously we're not quite done yet. Uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, we turn the pacer off already. With the pacer off, press and hold the preset button while switching pacer on again. There we get the global configuration mode. 
we're going to set the mode to reset and press the data encoder. Okay, and that's got us back. The firmware is now up to date and complete, and we're ready to go forward with the rest. So the next thing I would like to do is to be able to download these presets that I've made. These are presets that work for Ableton Live or really any DAW. There's different CC values that have been assigned to each of the pedals, and you can kind of do with those with what you want. And then also uh, a good preset that works with TC Electronics Voice Live Touch 2, which I will be doing a tutorial on in the near future as well. So you can go to my uh, homepage here. This is brandonxshaw.com. And then you go down to Sound, Reviews and Tutorials. And let's go ahead and look at the Nectar Pacer MIDI foot switch with TC Helicon's Voice Live Touch 2, just so we can get all those presets if we want. Okay, uh, then we scroll down the article here and we see these presets. And you can either get the presets that are just for the Touch 2, but I'm going to go ahead and get all the presets uh, that I wanted originally. So I'm going to go down there and download them. Okay, and then we see that these are now down among my my presets among my among my downloads. All right, for the next step, I need to find a way to get that data into my uh, pacer. So I'm going to go to this website for Mac. This is the the program that I'm using. This is called s n o i z e dot com. So snoise dot com, and I'm going to download. Uh, this right here, the Sysix um, librarian. I just want to mention quickly this this MIDI monitor is also quite useful for this program. This the MIDI monitor when you launch that, basically anytime you press a button that has a CC code, it will tell you what the CC code is that your unit is sending. If it's a keyboard, if it's a pacer, if it's what whatever it is. So that's quite useful if you get a little bit lost sometimes in in what you've what you've programmed. But for now, I just want you to download this uh, Sysix librarian. And I've already downloaded that, so I'm going to go ahead and open it. The folder where I had downloaded uh, the preset here, all BCS presets for Nectar Pacer, Ableton, and Touch. And I'm going to take those and drag them over. And it says, make sure that you want to use this. And I say, yes, I do. And there they are. Okay, so next we have some options. We can either go here to our Sysix librarian and find uh, the presets that we want to download. I've downloaded all of them, but you can do whatever, whichever you like. And then go to MIDI 1. So this is <laughs> something that's a little bit sneaky, sneaky, but most likely you're, you're going to have your channel sending over MIDI 1, and that's where it needs to be uh, to work. I'll show you why. If I just send it as acting as a source, and I press play here, if we look at my information here on the, on the screen of the pacer, it says it's sent, but we see no sort of information there. When I switch this over to MIDI 1, and then when I send the information, system loading, and we see that here on the screen of the computer that this is sending all of the information through that I'll need, um, that I want to see updated on my pacer. So I will fast forward here as this is loading all of the information because there's a lot of different signals that have been, that have been changed, and then we'll check back in. Okay, we are coming to the end of our load here. And just so you know, this took about 10 minutes for me for, for that to happen. Um, and then we see we automatically have these these settings in. So we see here we have uh, B1 as TC Vokes. And um, this has the presets that I've made uniquely for the TC uh, Vokes, the Touch 2 um, device. So you'll see that these are going to be different from what you might find um, on, your, on your presets otherwise. Different colors, different CC values. 
uh, different so forth and so on, even down for the um, pedal that I have set in here that's on channel 109. And that, that for how I have it set up controls the gain, um, the guitar gain for the through the through the TC uh, Vokes, the, the touch tube. So you can uh, program this any way you have, but these are the presets that I have in here. We see <coughs> preset one. We can go on down to the Ableton presets that I have, uh, A1, A4. So these have different CC values again, starting with 96, 97, and so forth. And then we can go up to the next preset. The next preset's gonna start with number uh, 101 and goes up to 104. And then these actually have set up for something uh, quite quite different. They're gonna let you scroll either sideways or down using another uh, software, which I'll talk about in just a second. And also this button up here, the track button on the Ableton presets that I have, it sends a command that is gonna be translated as command uh, Z. So again, I will redirect you towards uh, my website here. If you look at the uh, sound files, reviews and tutorials, and then setting up Nectar with with Ableton Live, and you can see all those presets that I have have there. Uh, take some time with it and get get familiar with that. Um, okay, that's the the basics of how to set this up through SysX. The one other thing I wanted to, to show you is that you can also use um, uh, Francois Grigori's website. This uh, Francois Grigori uh, GitHub. Uh, I'll put the I'll put the the link down there for you um, in the in the information box, and then go to controls here, and then you can also reload these presets from um, from a file, and they will load up for you. Um, right now, just to kind of give you a sneak preview, if you've not seen this page before, or uh, a little bit of information if you if you're not familiar with it, now I can go to a one, press a one. It's going to read the information from the pacer, and then tell me what each one of these values are. Okay. I can read all of them from the pacer. And this is a great way to get an overview of all the presets that you've just you've just downloaded. Um, the way that I have this set up is I have basically four presets here that you can use with any DAW. I call these Ableton presets because that's originally what I had them intended for, but you can use them for, for whatever. And they're copied off of this D4 here. So basically it's like putting D4 up in these phases and then I've changed the colors a little bit. I've changed the CC values and so forth, just kind of for the way that, that I'd like to work. Um, and then this is uh, B1 is the TC Vokes. This is the TC uh, Live Voice Touch 2 um, presets that I've, that I've put in giving different CC values to each one of these pedals, which I find quite useful. Um, I haven't got that video up yet, but I hope to get that up in the near future to show you how to, how to use that. Okay, and so that is an overview of how to take information uh, from my website and to load those presets onto your own Nectar Pacer. If you're interested in the Nectar Pacer, there is a link below, which you can click on. Um, it's an affiliate link, so I'd appreciate it if you've uh, gotten anything out of these um, tutorials that I've put up. If you click that on uh, on through to, to make your purchase, that would kick me, I think, 3% or something like that, uh, which is not much, but it would be uh, helpful for um, getting, these, getting these videos all done. All right, uh, happy playing, and I'll talk to you soon.